In the spirit of facts before feelings, let's analyse what went down at the Free Tommy Robinson protest at the weekend. Speakers included Belgian-Flemish nationalist Philip de Winter and Dutch nationalist Geert Wilders, both well-known anti-Islam politicians. Their agenda is fairly obvious, to foment a united anti-Islam movement in Europe by using ridiculous hyperbole. Tommy Robinson is the greatest freedom fighter of Britain today. UKIP leader Gerard Batten also glommed on to the protest in hope of re-energising his party, though James Carver recently quit over Batten's support for Tommy, and even former leader Nigel Farage thinks Tommy's an idiot. Frankly, the judge had almost no choice but to give him a jail sentence. So I think Robinson, frankly, uh, was out there asking for trouble, and I don't think it was a very bright thing to do. Let's take a closer look at what some people said. There is a swoop from the left to the right, and what's right is right. Now, I want to move on to somebody's arrest. It was far too swift. His arrest was too swift? He was live streaming for over an hour and was confronting defendants almost right away. Tommy's live feed that we all saw, that we've all agreed on, was over an hour long. Oh, he knows that. So what's his point? How many people saw the live feed of Tommy's arrest? Yeah! Everybody. We're not stupid. He asked if he could film away from the court on the pavement and he was told yes. Did you hear that? Yeah, because yeah, filming beyond the court precinct isn't illegal. It's all the other things he did, like suggesting defendants were guilty, asking if they felt guilty and why they weren't ashamed, asking about verdicts and trying to report on the trial while it's all protected by a postponement order. Revealing they were found guilty or just suggesting they were guilty is a contempt of court because it prejudices the third trial in the series that is yet to come. Tommy's live feed that we all saw, that we've all agreed on, could have been stopped at any time. Yeah? yeah. It could have been stopped at any time. It was over an hour long before he presumably crossed the line. It could have been prevented. And he could have still been sat at home right now with his family. Yeah, he could have been sat home with his family if he listened to the judge the first time around when he was given a suspended sentence for filming inside a court and calling defendants guilty before a jury had decided that. Contrary to his claim that they acted too quickly, Tufts now seems to be suggesting that it's all the fault of the police for not arresting or stopping Tommy sooner. What about some personal restraint and responsibility? Is Tommy just constantly on the verge of committing crimes if the police aren't there to stop him? And that does seem to be why he was arrested on suspicion of breach of the peace. That's partly what the power is for, to dissolve a situation before it goes too far. Nobody is charged with breach of the peace. That's not how it works. If they are charged, it's because evidence is found of other offences, like contempt of court. Yes, Tommy pushes the boundaries. You know, the more he speaks, it seems like this guy recognises that Tommy broke the law. A bit like Tommy himself, who pleaded guilty. He pushes them to keep us informed of the filth that goes on behind closed doors for our protection. And that's why we love him, because he pushes their boundaries. Oh, right, British law doesn't apply to Tommy. I thought it was Islamists that don't believe the law applies to them. And God bless you all, mainstream media at the front, yeah? None of you have got the balls to bring the truth, have you? Actually, the mainstream media reported on this case as soon as it came to light, 
one of the defences of Tommy is that all he was doing was reading out charges that were reported by the BBC and the Huddersfield Examiner, albeit from last year at Magistrates Court before the postponement order was made. In fact, there were journalists in the courtroom while Robinson was stomping around outside accosting defendants and committing contempt of court. Their reports will be published once the third trial is over and then we'll get to know what happened. I'm not a fan of the mainstream media, but who's done a better job at reporting on this? It certainly isn't Tommy Robinson. If the judge, if the judge wanted to send a strong message on the day to Tommy, the slightly overstepping mark, he could have given him a hefty fine, he could have given him community service at the absolute worst. Well, actually, the judge was entitled to give Tommy two years at the absolute worst. Prejudicing trials, risking costly reruns and perhaps having the whole thing thrown out is considered a very big deal. Tommy was already given a message last year in Canterbury when he was allowed to walk free on a suspended sentence. He was told to stay away. Clearly, he needed something harsher for that message to get through. I've seen Tommy cry. When he tells me about some of the stories that he chooses to cover, traumatic stories, okay, the man's got the heart of a lion, the size of a lion, I'm telling you that, as a friend. And Tommy would never, ever do anything deliberately to jeopardise a trial. What kind of nonsense is that to print? Shame on you. Tommy would never, ever, ever do anything intentionally to jeopardise anything. Regardless of, of what the biased media say, therefore, there was never ever any intent. And on those grounds, I protest. They grant Tommy leave to appeal, overturn his conviction, and send him home! Well, if we're going on facts before feels, it doesn't matter what he claims his intentions were, under the Contempt of Court Act 1981, the offence is strict liability. Whether he knew the law or not doesn't come into it, and whether you agree with the law or not doesn't change the fact that he could have given the defence an easy out. Former prosecutor Nazir Afsal saw this happen during the Rochdale case. Their lawyers applied at their trial that the jury had been prejudiced by the far right. We had to fight to persuade the court to allow the trial to continue. Those criminals came close to being freed and victims close to getting no justice. The jury must decide on evidence, not on your opinion. Although well, yet, let's put an MP into Parliament to ask the British government a question. Here are the questions that I would like to ask the British government. And I, in Parliament, one day, and not too far away, will do so. I want to ask the British government these questions. Why is it so easy for our state to jail Tommy Robinson, when it is so difficult to jail a group of men found in an under Maybe because a child grooming case involving over 20 defendants is a bit more complex. Perhaps it would all go a bit quicker if Tommy stopped sticking his beak in. Why is it so easy to jail a man for leaving bacon at a mosque, but so difficult to jail jihadis who preach murder and death at the British in our country? Why is the British government allowing ISIS fighters to return from Syria and threaten our safety? Yeah, why is that? It's funny because me and a lot of other people who aren't looking to get into politics off the back of people's ignorance and bigotry are asking the same questions and we actually want the answers. Could it be that the state benefits from creating tensions between Muslims and natives? 
Could it be that appeasing Islamic extremists benefits the state's dirty foreign policy, like our support for Islamists in the Balkans, in Libya, in Syria? Terror attacks help win strong and stable elections and grant the security services even more money and power and less accountability. Tommy Robinson may have grew up in the face of hate-filled al Mahajarun figures in Luton, but al Mahajarun was teeming with spies and informants. If Tommy's genuine himself, he's probably a pawn in a much larger game. For Anne-Marie Waters, it's much easier to bash some Muslims than to deeply explore the questions she asks. Tommy Robinson is one of the bravest people in this country. Yeah, because he was very brave when he assaulted an off-duty police officer in 2005 who had intervened in a domestic incident between Tommy and his partner. He showed lots of respect for young women when he tweeted as a 15-year-old that she was pretty fit for a Muslim and that he didn't want to get rid of pretty Muslim girls. And to say no to a police that prioritise offending Muslims over the rape of young British girls. Enough! Sure, but what about the rape of Pakistani girls? Surely they have even less of a voice. What about the rape of young boys by football coaches? What about the Catholic Church? Or the Church of England and the Chichester scandal? What about the majority white men on the sex offenders register? What about founding EDL member Richard Price, who Tommy Robinson defended after he was convicted for child porn? Child abuse happens in all walks of life for a variety of different reasons. Stop exploiting one aspect of it for political points. On the 18th of March 2018, we went to Stephen's Corner for the first time. To tell anybody that was willing to listen to our story about our boys. There was only me, Nicola, Harry's mum and soon Harry's dad. We stood in the freezing cold informing people of what had happened to our poor children and how their murders were being covered up. That night I came home and did a video. That was the first of many. The next day people were informing us that Tommy wanted our number. So I gave our number over and spoke to him. The only sympathetic figure in the lineup was Tracy Blackwell who sadly lost her son Josh, along with two of his friends, when a drunk driver swerved into them while they were walking on a path. Janesh Chudizama was twice the legal alcohol limit and got 13 years in prison for death by dangerous driving. However, it seems with the help of Tommy Robinson, this case is being alluded to now as a Muslim terror attack that the state is supposedly covering up. There's no evidence for this, not least because the culprit is a Hindu of Indian descent. Why exploit this poor lady's grief and allow her to add to the anti-Islam rhetoric? The establishment has allowed a virus into our country and they are allowing that virus to try and take over. That is incredible bravery. And he shuts it off. Honestly, he just shuts it off. Now, I'm going to say he could be sitting back. It's almost like, I don't know what this government's trying to do, but for me, he's become like some sort of Robin Hood figure. Because the Sheriff of London and all her cronies in Westminster are constantly trying to persecute him and us for having a different opinion to them. What kind of far-right lunatic gets you involved with a, a children's cancer charity? and has since sent many families with sick children on holidays to Florida to Disneyland. It's been claimed that Robinson makes 4000 a month from his publicity stunt videos, donations and other web revenue. His so-called legal fund has certainly been pushed by the YouTube echo chamber. Let's hope he donates all of that to charity because he certainly doesn't have a case for appeal. Truth be known, I don't think there'll ever be a statue of Theresa May or Gordon Brown or Tony Blair. But I reckon one day, I hope, I've got my fingers crossed, I hope and pray, that just up the road here, there's a big bronze statue somewhere in Churchill of Tommy Robinson. 
If you search Google for that particular case, you will find pictures and details of the suspects already printed by nearly every national UK newspaper. Oh, but I thought the mainstream media weren't covering the case. Make your mind up. So what did Tommy do exactly that nearly every other reporter in this land did? He reported on the case after the postponement order was made and suggested the men were guilty, prejudicing the third trial in the series. Look at the pictures and the footage of Max Clifford and Rolf Harris fighting their way. Fighting away from hundreds of None of those reporters were arrested on the press that the case will collapse. This just highlights Tommy's absolute sham conviction. Firstly, none of those reporters suggested the men were guilty, and there was no postponement order on those trials because there was only one defendant and one trial. Thus, you couldn't prejudice the third trial in the series because there wasn't one. Show me one grooming gang that Tommy exposed. Andrew Norfolk of the Times first wrote about this in 2003. All Tommy does, as was demonstrated in this video, is get mainstream media reports, repeat them in a prejudiced manner and put trials at risk, and then claim the media is silent. Have you ever heard of another case where someone was arrested, tried, sentenced and transferred to a prison all within the space of 180 minutes. No, because it has never happened before. Yes, it has. 19-year-old Paul Thompson was jailed for two months for contempt of court in about an hour. The offence is often dealt with quickly because it's often done at court and is impeding on court proceedings. So spread the word and let's shut down London. Shut it down. During the event, there were several instances of violence against police and even animals. And while it wouldn't be fair to tar everyone with the same brush, some of those speeches about viruses and pedo protectors no doubt hyped people up. And it's not like Tommy Robinson or the EDL are new to violence. The irony in all this is that it's usually Tommy's supporters that call for tough law and order, but that seems only to apply to the people they don't like. Tommy is now above the law, and they want to shut down London until he's freed. I say don't fall victim to mob rule. Don't free Tommy Robinson, and don't fall for a divide and conquer agenda that can only result in more violence. I've been Keelan Balderson, keep it locked here on wideshut.co.uk.